Today we're talking about the second female ever to join the G.I. Joe team. That's right, today we're going through the history and the origin of CoverGirl. Before we start though, I do want to say thank you, whether it's your first time here, or you're back for more for watching JLS Comics, and don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss the content we upload just like this each and every week. Jump into this video. Courtney Krieger was born and raised in Peoria, Illinois. As she got older, she started modeling, frequently traveling up to Chicago or out to New York City for modeling gigs like fashion magazine cover shoots. It became monotonous and unfulfilling for Courtney, so she decided to pursue something more challenging. Courtney is a lot more than a beautiful face, and she set out to prove just that. How? By joining the United States Army, where she graduated armor school and became an expert on gas turbines and diesel engines. Learn how to drive and maintain MBTs, Hummers, now Strikers and IFVs, namely the different variants on the Bradley platform. And she also learned vehicles like LAVs, LSVs, the M104, as well as the M109 Paladin. As a complement to her armor school training, Courtney qualified with anti-tank weapons like the Toe, Law, the Dragon AT, but she wanted more. So Courtney was able to parlay her previous life on the fashion scene into being accepted at military intel school at Fort Huachuca in Arizona. It turns out that her makeup skills lent themselves well to intelligence and counterintelligence human fieldcraft. This additional level of fieldcraft earned her a spot with the G.I. Joe team. First appearance in Larry Hama's Real American Hero comic book run through Marvel Comics was with issue 16, which came in 1983 and aligned with her action figure release as well as her debut in the Sunbow miniseries. In issue 16, Hawk had set up a training course to run some of their heavy machinery through its paces when CoverGirl showed up in the new Wolverine followed by Tripwire. She immediately took out eight his tanks with the Stinger missiles on the Wolverine. Scarlet was kind of annoyed that another girl was joining the team. Apparently she liked being the Smurfette of the team. They're quickly deployed to the United States Capitol along with the Virginia National Guard to defend the U.S. Capitol and specifically for the G.I. Joe team, it turned out to be defending the U.S. Treasury Building from Cobra attack. Cobra's plan was to have Dr. Venom poison the money that was being stored on site. When it was distributed, it would poison millions. CoverGirl was hiding her Wolverine inside a garbage truck and she burst out, saving Gung-Ho, Tripwire, and Torpedo and she blasted some hiss tanks before Cobra smashed right into the Wolverine tank, knocked it over, right on his way out of town. In issue 23, the team was in Bern, Switzerland, keeping an eye on the Baroness who was there for treatment at the Bern Institute of Reconstructive Surgery. CoverGirl was with Clutch, tailing Major Blood, who was also nearby. Clutch kept hitting on CoverGirl, and during surveillance, he actually said to her, Say, we could pull into a dark alley and pretend to make out. A car chase ensued just north of Lucca, Italy. They had their Porsche 911 and Blood Baroness and their gangsters in a 1931 Duesenberg. Then Snowjob showed up in a vamp that CoverGirl said was hers. It was a good old-fashioned car chase on the mountains and switchbacks of the Swiss Alps. Blood and Baroness smashed the Porsche with the dragon facade on a raid float that they stole, leaving the rest of the chase up to the vamp. Some locals gave them a motorcycle they caught up, and it ended with Cobra Commander in G.I. Joe custody. In issue 31, CoverGirl was part of the heavy mechanized motorcade rolling back into Fort Wadsworth when some kid remarked, boy those chaplain's assistants sure do have some nice stuff. In issue 33, Clutch continued his pervy advances on CoverGirl when he asked her to team up with Scarlet and become a mud wrestling tag team that he wanted to manage. Issue 38, had CoverGirl on the team raiding the Staten Island home of a Cobra undercover agent who set up the ambush at the Arbco Circus. When Duke and Lady J were hit, Blowtorch pulled them away while CoverGirl laid down cover fire right through a front window on the home. And it turns out that it was Ripcord's girlfriend, Candy Apple's father house, Professor Apple, a CG. Issue 68, the Joes were in Frozen Land, a frozen land, see the pun there, with a special research team that turned out to be Battle Force 2000. CoverGirl raced out of a Massive cargo plane, gunner atop a persuader with backstop as her driver. Covergirl was one of the G.I. Joes not involved in the Cobra Civil War operation that ultimately failed and resulted in General Mathis arresting the G.I. Joe team and shutting them all down. Because she wasn't part of the op, she was still free but had gone to ground, so her and the rest of them staged a rescue operation at St. Lowe's Infirmary. General Mathis and his 50 DOA agents were holding Hawk and Hollingsworth at the hospital, but it was a ruse to draw out the remaining G.I. Joes. She was dressed like a nurse and was actually hit with gunfire that one of the DOA agents fired into the crowd. It ended with a save from Destro, who managed to save his receipts. And her final outing before the decommissioning in issue 155 was issue 149, in which she was monitoring Destro's castle in Transcarpathia from right under the Utah desert. I saw an ICBM launch, followed by a SAM that took it out. It came Devil's Due in the non-canon time period, and she wouldn't be back to canon homoverse until issue 173. 
In the issue, Cross Country, Wild Card, Stealer, and Cover Girl were in an M1 A2 main battle tank on the streets of Benzene, where the October Guard also happened to be with a Russian T90 tank. They found each other and fired and paint. So they were actually there both trying to win a contract for an order of tanks. It turns out that Cobra was invading from neighboring Trucial Abysmia with a column of Python Patrol his tanks, all different models of their own. Covergirl first took out the command tank and then she managed to take out three more tanks with a well-placed sabot round fired from the main gun turret. They then took out another three, the depleted uranium super penetrator round, a hot butter knife as it were. Then another column of his tanks and maggots rolled up and overwhelmed them with sheer numbers, but the battle was called off at the last minute, and in issue 174, they were all captured. But apparently they were rescued off panel because she showed up again in issue 193, Covergirl was assigned a full combat alert while Alpha and Bravo teams mounted up for the Graves rescue op in Sierra Gordo. Which turned out to be a good thing that some of the Joes remained behind because it was revealed in issue 200 that Cobra used the operation as a front to attack the pit. Issue 209, Covergirl and Scarlet both gave Sean Collins, codenamed Throwdown, a kiss as he got a new assignment and would apparently be leaving. But it turned out that the papers were fake and was actually assigned to the G.I. Joe force. Clutch seemed jealous because he was the one who wanted their loving back in the early 80s era issues. Next issue, Covergirl was with Clutch, Outback, Dusty, Throwdown, and Bazooka. They dropped into Ollie's stand along with the Wolverine missile tank and a Hummer to recon a revenge facility in the area spotted a shadow track vehicle loaded with red shadows, a blue ninja, and a sand viper. The combined effort of revanche, cobra, and red shadows. Covergirl used her body to distract them while the team took out the squad, stole their uniforms, and used them to infiltrate a massive assembly and staging complex while Covergirl and Bazooka stayed outside the wire to provide cover upon Exfil. So on the way out, with their new stolen uniforms, Covergirl took out the guard tower's fencing and checked hedgehogs with her wolverine. And so the team made it out, while the two giant Megazord-type mech robots fight, that's what was there. It was Project Rhodesia, named after the Colossus of Rhodes. They made it out just in time to get word that Snake Eyes died in the Battle at the Pit. In Cobra World Order, Covergirl's task was taking out Seattle Fred, one of the activated CGs. She took out her Fred, but managed to get shot in the process. Most of the Freds were stopped and captured, although Covergirl's Fred was shot dead. Covergirl's wounds were so bad from the incident that she was put in a medically induced coma. Chuckles was also injured, but he was conscious and in rehab. And in issue 224, it was confirmed that hers was one of three Freds that were KIA. It wouldn't be until issue 228 when she was out of her coma and well enough to be discharged. Instead of combat operations, she was still recovering. In fact, her throat was still damaged and she was on a different kind of duty. She and Lady J to the mother of a slain soldier to deliver the medals to her. And it turns out that the fallen soldier is Shooter from all the way back in issue 1, a lady named Jody Craig. In issue 259, Covergirl was healed enough to head back into the field. She led a team to Shazadar, and Shazadar was an emirate that grew in the space between Trucial Abysmia and Benzene. They were tasked with rescuing Ripcord Heavy Duty and Airborne, who had gone radio silent after they were sent in earlier to rescue UN workers. Covergirl and her extraction team ran into an ambush by Abood's forces. Then in issue 261, they were able to meet with the G.I. Joe trio that had gone missing. The extremist forces were bearing down on them, and a high-speed chase coordinated with Wild Bill in a C-130 transport plane ensued. Wild Bill dipped down with the massive transport plane just off the ground and dropped a ramp, which the Joes were able to use to drive right up into the back of the plane. Then Repeater and Covergirl pushed the Chenoweth right out the back of the C-130, and the Rebels were happy they had recovered this tech right up until Joystick's drone unloaded a Hellfire right up their tailpipe. And so she remains an active part of the G.I. Joe roster and a prominent figure in Hama's ongoing tales. It was in European Missions number 9, where Cobra had been going around stealing diamonds to power diamond-powered laser device. Action Force had Courtney walking around Amsterdam with their Watchstar Diamond in an attempt to lure out Cobra. Copperhead and Weaponsmith found her and captured her, and it turns out that Watchstar was fake, but it had a homing device in it that called Action Force to their location. In another reveal, it turns out that Weaponsmith actually knew that Courtney was not just a quote-unquote model, but was actually an Action Force operative. His plan was to have her draw Action Force to them so he could kill them with a diamond-powered laser. Which didn't work, of course. In 1983, the Wolverine tank was released and it was packaged with a Covergirl action figure and it wouldn't be until a couple decades later, 2006 to be precise, when she finally got an update. Part of a three-pack, and for this, her name was not Covergirl, it was Agent Courtney Creer. It came packaged with a G.I. Joe 16 from Devil's Due, which featured her on a mission to track down a mysterious missing child. This issue 16 was symbolic because it was in issue 16 of the Marvel series where she first appeared. 
She was Courtney Krieger for the ROC line as well, and her latest figure came out in 2013 as a G.I. Joe Collectors Club exclusive. Courtney showed up in many of the G.I. Joe series through the years, sometimes with red hair, sometimes with blonde hair. Her Sumbo, of a girl, was voiced by Liz Aubrey. She first showed up in the 1983 miniseries with her Wolverine and, yes, blonde hair. And in an episode from Season 2 called Glamour Girls, it was CoverGirl and Lady J who entered a modeling contest being run by Zartan and the Baroness. Carolina Kirkova played CoverGirl in the 2009 live-action movie where she was killed by Zartan, but that's all we're going to say about those movies. And so that is it for this one, my friends. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel so you can be one of the first to know when we upload videos just like this each and every week. I'm Jesse, this is JLS Comics, and I'll see you soon.